had to had to poke the bear a little bit. <laughs> so I've seen you know Jim out there on his quad, and he's just he's just ripping that four four by four quad out there, and just letting it eat and just having a good time. And I'm like, you know what? That's a goal of mine. You know, I, but beyond doing that, being able to be like like Pastor Bob and. And Richardson, you know, at 70 plus years old and just ministering the gospel. What an amazing testimony and how powerful and how awesome. It just goes to show that it, it, there's no there's no retirement in God. You know, you just you just keep going from glory to glory to glory, right? And you just keep being obedient to what God is telling you to do. And it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how young you are, God has got a plan and God has got a purpose for you, amen. And God has got it. God has got a calling on your life, and you just, you just got to submit to that calling and do what he's telling you to do. And God blesses you when you do that. You know, so uh, it was just awesome to see um, Pastor Bob Richardson just be in the presence of God, be sensitive to the Spirit, listen to the Spirit of God. Um, you know, and I was thinking how a lot of times we're just all jazzed during that time, and it's because we come with, with a spirit of expectation, and that's how we ought to be every service. It's coming with a spirit of expectation. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's all uh, pray as we get ready to dismiss these kids, and we'll get into the Word this morning. Father, we just love you, and we honor you. We thank you, Lord, for all of our children here, God. We just pray, Lord, that you would just bless our children as we go to class, Lord, that you would minister to them, God, that your hand would rest upon them. Lord, all of our children, whether they're here or not here, young or old, Lord, bless all of our children. May your hands rest upon our, all of our children. Put a hedge of protection around them. What the enemy means for destruction, turn it around for your glory, God. We love you and we honor you, Master. And you just want to pray. Amen and amen. Kids are dismissed. Amen. Praise God. We're just going to dive right into the word this morning, Tim. Um, we just want to welcome everybody that's joining us on stream this morning. Uh, thank you for being a part of, of the service and what's happening and what's going on. Uh, we just pray that the word of God bless you this morning and ministers to you. Uh, remember, if you have a prayer request, hit us up in chat. Uh, we've got people standing by waiting to pray for you and to, to, uh, to just agree and, and to share our faith with your faith and stand on, on the word of God and believe in God for your promises to be fulfilled. Amen. Um, you know, it's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be with one another. Um, this morning, if you're taking notes... And you would like to entitle notes. This morning, the title of this is Rejoice, It's the Coat. Rejoice, It's the Coat. So right now we are we are actually in the sixth day of Sukkot. Um, Sukkot actually started Monday, last Monday evening at sundown. And it's a seven-day feast. It's a seven-day holiday. Um, and it's a very joyful Holiday. It's a rejoicing holiday, and which is hence the reason I, I I titled this message "Rejoice." It's Sukkot because uh, during this time of Sukkot, we're commanded to be rejoicing and and, and joyful and happy and excited. Um, it's not a it's a, not a morning type of holiday or feast, if you would. And this is this is the last high holiday off or sorry, the last high holiday. Uh, feast that we are we are celebrating um, within the high holy days, and so just to kind of give you an idea, a little bit of uh, uh, just to back up for a moment, if I could, to kind of uh, help you out to help you realize where we are at on God's calendar. Um, God has a calendar. If you didn't know it, um, He operates off of a calendar, and and uh, He doesn't operate off of our. Gregorian calendar, um, he operates off of his calendar. So just to say, just to kind of show you where we're at in the timeline of God's God's calendar and what's happened and what's recently has gone down. Um, so we just came out of uh, the month of Elul, um, which is when we when we celebrate uh, Teshuvah, which is returning back to God. It's the reason we just had um, the Returning to God conference. Um, we always have this conference. Initially, when we started this conference, it did not, it was, we weren't even thinking about this stuff. We just, uh, Pastor Jeff had just planned it during this time, not knowing the season really in which we were in, um, but come to find out, 
we're in the, the season of returning to God. And so we've just come through the month of Elul, which is uh, Teshuvah, returning back to God. So during the month of Elul, for 40 days, they, they sound the trumpet. They blow the shofar. There's my fake shofar for you. <laughs> and so they sound the shofar. And they, and, they, and they blow the trumpet in Zion. Remember, that they say they blow the trumpet in Zion and they sound the shofar. And the purpose of that is to get the people ready and for them to be alerted, hey, stuff is getting ready to take place. Things are getting ready to happen, okay? And so, um, I, now, we may not hear, we may not have heard the shofar physically this year. Maybe you didn't hear it. Um, we don't really live in a region where you hear so far being blown around your neighborhood, but if you were to live in Israel, you would hear so far being blown daily throughout the neighborhoods. Um, and then, so they're, they're, they're alerting the people. And here we may not have physically heard the so far, but, but to be honest with you, I truly believe spiritually the so far is sounding. Spiritually, the so far. God is, is the, the Lord is blowing the shofar loudly, spiritually right now. I mean, look at look at where we are standing and what is going on um, with COVID, with our economy, with everything that is happening. I mean, let's take COVID for example. You know, with the uh, with the with the vaccine mandates of, on on various people and in certain circumstances. Like, I mean, you can't even fly out of country right now. Unless you have had a COVID, uh, a COVID vaccine, and if you've had a a test that shows within the last 72 hours that you have that you don't have COVID and that you've tested negative for COVID, you can't even fly out of the country unless you prove and you show that. You have to show your vaccine card and your proof of of, of test that you you don't have it. Um, you know, and so. It, I believe it's a, a, a sounding of the shofar. Now, do I do I believe that the the vaccine is 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 a mark on the back of your hand or or a mark on your forehead? Absolutely not. I don't believe that. But do I believe it's a sounding of the trumpet? Yes, I do. Do I believe it's birth pains to what's happening and what's getting ready to take place? Absolutely, I believe that. It is birth pains. It's it, it's it's the shofar being sounded saying. Wake up! Look at what's going on in the world today. The, your redemption draws nigh. Amen. And so the spiritually the shofar is sounding and, and, and the Lord is, is sounding the alarm. And so we've just come through the month of Elul. That just took place. And then uh, right after that we head into Rosh Hashanah, uh, which is the head of the new year. Uh, and so we just celebrated the Feast of Rosh Hashanah just a little bit ago. And then um, right after that, um, I believe it was 10 days after Rosh Hashanah, we, we celebrated Yom Kippur. Um, and so that was the, you know, the, the atoning of the sins where, where they go in and they, they make the sacrifice and they atone for the sins. And then, then now after, the, after Yom Kippur, now we're into Sukkot. And so this is where we're at on God's calendar. Uh, we're into Sukkot, which Sukkot is a fantastic time. Uh, it's the feast of rejoicing, and so, like I said, we're today, right now, we are currently on the sixth day of Sukkot. Tomorrow evening at sundown, tomorrow uh, evening at sundown, Sukkot will end, and so we started it last Monday. We'll end um, sundown tomorrow. So, uh, Sukkot, or it's also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, as well as the Feast of Booths. It's known as the Feast of Booths as well. And so I'm going to really focus on the rejoicing part of this feast this morning. And how God has called us to be joyful and, and to rejoice. And I'm going to give you the reasons in which why we should be rejoicing and we should be joyful during this holiday. And Leviticus, let me read these scriptures to you. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 through 44, Leviticus 23, 33 through 44. This is where it talks about the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth the day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For, for seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord on the eighth day. You shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is, a, it is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything on its day. Verse 38, besides the Sabbath, the Lord of the Lord, besides your gifts, besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in, <coughs> excuse me, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day, there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day, a Sabbath rest. Verse 40. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. For, uh, you shall keep it as a feast of the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in, blue, in booths. <coughs> that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. And so here, uh, one of the things in which this passage reminds us is this is not a Jewish feast, but rather it's a feast of the Lord. And his feasts are rehearsals of his good plans for us. They're, they're a shadow of picture, uh, a shadow of which pictures the goodness of God and, and the good things to come within our lives. They are, they are a rehearsal. The feasts are a rehearsal. Like, for example, <coughs> excuse me, Passover was a rehearsal until Jesus came and he was the ultimate sacrifice. Amen? And so Passover was, was continually a rehearsal and then Jesus came and he was the ultimate sacrifice. And it's only through him that we can make it to the kingdom of God. Amen? Yes. It's through accepting him. And so celebrating Sukkot is an annual reminder of God's provision. It's a reminder of God's protection. It's a reminder of God's presence. And it's a reminder of God's promise during the 40 years in the wilderness from Egypt to the promised land. The land that was flowing with milk and honey. And so, Sukkot reminds us of God's provision, his protection, his presence, as well as his promise. That's what it reminds us of. And so, when we celebrate Sukkot, we, we are reminded of how good God is and the fact that he has provided for us, he protects us, his presence is continually with us. As well as his promises are yea and amen. His promises will never fail. Amen? amen. And so, it was during these years that Israel lived in tents. And during this journey, the Lord gave them water from the rock, manna from heaven in the morning, and quail in the evening. God took care of them in the wilderness. Even though it was their fault, that they were in the wilderness, God still took care of them. Amen. How, how many of you can relate to that? 
Even though it's our fault sometimes, we get into situations and circumstances that we get into, God still loves us, and he still takes care of us. Amen? Amen. As, as For those of us who have children, we know that even though it's our children's fault sometimes that they get into sticky situations, we still love them, and we go and we rescue them. You know, I've told my boys continually, I've told them before, I've said, you know what? If you're ever out somewhere and maybe you're hanging out with your friends or something or, or you're out doing something with, with Connor and you get in a sticky situation. No, they, <laughs> that's why they're allowed to hang out with Connor. <laughs> but if you ever are hanging out with some other friends other than Connor <laughs> and you ever get into a sticky situation, you just call us and we will come get you. I don't care where we're at, where you're at. I don't care what's happening. There will be no questions asked. I will come and get you. Amen. It doesn't matter. Why? Because I love them. And even though it was because of maybe their own stupidity that they got into the situation they were in, I still want them to be blessed and I want them out of that situation. Even though it was Israelites' own stupidity for walking in the wilderness for 40 years, they wandered and meandered through the wilderness. God was like, all right, well, I can't leave them out here to die. So... You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna bless them. I'm gonna take care of them. I'm gonna give them food. I'm gonna give them shelter. I'm gonna make sure they're taken care of, even though they're wandering through all this wilderness. I'm still gonna take care of them. Amen. And so during that time, the Lord was before them on their journey in a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of, of cloud by day. God made sure to take care of them. He took care of their needs. And so Sukkot. Is a festival of rejoicing. If you get if you get anything this morning, I mean, we we I we can talk about a bunch of different things on Sukkot, but my main focus this morning is rejoicing. It's 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 a happy festival. It's a festival of being uh, excited and being joyful because God's provision is with you. God's protection is with you. God's presence is with you. God's promises are yes and amen to you. If anything ought to make you happy, those things ought to make you happy. If, I mean, aside from anything, just the presence of God being with you ought to make you happy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Just the presence of God. I mean, because when you have the presence of God, everything else is, is a byproduct of the presence of God. I mean, your, 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 your health. Is a byproduct of the of how much of the presence of God you have in your life. Your joy is a byproduct of how much of the presence of God you have in your life. Your peace is, is a byproduct of how much of the presence of God you have in your life. Your your relationship status uh, of, of how how well your relationships are with your friends and your family and your children is a byproduct of how much everything revolves around the presence of God. So if it was just the presence of God that was with them, and that was it, not 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 including the provision of, of God, not including the the promises of God, that promise that God was going to get them to the promised land, if it was just the presence of God, that in and of itself is enough to say God thank you, and to be happy, and to be joyful, and to praise God for all eternity. Amen. And so, Sukkot is a festival of rejoicing. And the reason for this is, one, it commemorates, like I've been saying, it commemorates God's goodness and provision during the time the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness. And it reminds us that we, too, we, too, are sojourners in this land. We, too, are people, sojourners mean that, that we are just travelers. We're, we're, we're passing through is what that, what that means. To just pass through. We too are passing through this land. Heading to the promised land. Yeah. And so it reminds us during this time of Sukkot. That we too are just passing through. And we are just but in temporary bodies. In temporary booths if you would. Passing through. This land. I love this time of Sukkot because it reminds us that God is 
with us. And that so we are sojourners here as we await a promise of dwelling in his presence fully when he comes again. It, it's just it's just what we're practicing. Is what it's a shadow of things to come, is what this is. Yeah. Earlier I was saying how these feasts are a shadow of things to come. This this Sukkot is a shadow of the millennial reign. When God tabernacles with us. You can read that in Revelation. I want to say it's Revelation 3. You can read it. You'd have to check it to make sure. But in, in, in chapter 3 of Revelation, I want to say, where uh, the tabernacle is now here and God dwells with his people. That's what this is talking about in Sukkot. Where he tabernacles with his people. And, and let me just put it in, in layman's terms. He hangs out with his people. Amen. He's chilling with his people. Oh, you would. He's, he's just hanging out and, be, and just being one with his people. He's tabernacling with us. And so that's what the Sukkot is all about. It, it's, it's shadowing the millennial reign is what it's shadowing. It's foreshadowing that. It's, it's shadow, foreshadowing that the fact that we're going to rule and reign with Christ and he's going to tabernacle with us. And so it commemorates God's goodness, his provision to Israel during the wilderness. Number two, it commemorates God's presence. Like I was just saying how he tabernacles with us. It, it commemorates God's presence, his goodness, and his provision with, with the, uh, the completion of the harvest. And, and it reminds us of his, of his daily provision and that we are truly not to worry but to place full trust in him, that he provides for us. And so when, when we celebrate Sukkot, it reminds us that God is your provider. And God will take care of you. God is the one that provides everything that you need. Amen. So when, we, when, we, when we're celebrating Sukkot, it, it's a time of rejoicing, saying, God, I thank you that, that nobody else is my provider, but you are my provider. You, God, are the one that takes care of me. Amen. It's, it's you and you alone. Number three, it looks forward to the future and the fullness of the harvest that has come. He is coming again. The feast is also called the feast. It's, some, some people know this feast also as known as the feast of ingathering. The feast of ingathering. Since it was the culmination of the, of the year's harvesting of fruits, that, that we have the assurance that we too will be gathered together to dwell with him forever. That we are going to be gathered together and we're going to dwell with him forever. Amen. What an amazing time. Yeah. Just a reminder to us because, you know, we've just gone through the head of the new year. Just, you know, it's Rosh Hashanah. It was, it, was a, it was the beginning of the year. We're starting out afresh. We're starting out anew. You know, things are, things are all new. And, and, and we've just kind of, you know, in, in, in a farmer's, in a farmer's perspective, and you all know I'm not a farmer, but for those of you who have done some farming in your life, you know that, that we are in the midst right now of, of your wrapping up all your, 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 your harvesting, you're, you're picking the last little bits of, of harvest for, from all the things that are, you've, har uh, you've been growing all year. And, uh, and throughout the season, and you're, you're picking those last bit of things. <clears throat> and now, for you farmers that, that partake in the next step, you take it one step further, and you probably just got done doing all your canning. Or maybe you're just getting ready to start doing all your canning. I know Darlene's done with all her canning. <laughs> Jolene, have you done all your canning yet? No. Nope. <laughs> so they're getting ready to start their canning. But they, they've just they, they've started finishing up, gathering all their all their last bit of harvest off of their crops. And as a matter of fact, if you would like some some of the bountiful harvest off of Jolene's crops, you can come over and stop by the house and uh, pick some up on your way out today. We have boatloads of tomatoes on our front porch. <laughs> For some reason, our front porch just started growing tomatoes. 
out of, out of the blue. And so our porch is loaded with tomatoes. Please come and pick some up when you leave today because we've got tons of them. And so, uh, you know, Christy's been making salsa and she's making spaghetti sauce and she's, she's doing all this stuff, you know. And um, Darlene, she's been canning. How many cans did you can, Darlene? 125. 125 cans of different products. She did canning this year. She's just a young whippersnapper, just making it happen. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, it's it, it, it's a time in which we, we we finish gathering all the fruits, and, and 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 it's a reminder to us that that God is going to gather all of His fruit together, all of, and He's going to harvest all of His fruit. Yeah, some of us are nuts, and He's going to gather us together. <laughs> Just joking. Just joking. And so they were, uh, so it, it reminds us of how good God is to us in our life. And so the Israelites were commanded to dwell in booths, or also known as tents. And so the frail, they, they're also, in, 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 in Hebrew, they're also known as sukkahs, is another word, is what they use. We call them booths, or tents. They call them sukkahs, is what they call them. S U. K-K-A-H, if you want to look it up on your own title. And so the frail sukkah, or a temporary booth, reminds us of the frailty of life. And so surviving the winds and the elements reminds us of his great love and his favor for us as we become living testimonies of the work of God within our lives. Because those sukkahs, they were frail. They weren't strong, sturdy Outbuildings, if you would. They weren't strong, strong, sturdy tents, but but they were made quick because they weren't they didn't dwell in one spot all the time. So they moved from spot to spot a lot of times. And, and so they, they didn't spend a ton of time on on making them large, huge, big, strong, sturdy structures. But it was they were they were just temporary booths. And so, you know, they sometimes they were pretty frail, and it reminds us that life. Is sometimes frail. Amen. Life is sometimes frail. We also are living in a body that is temporary. The flesh which we one day, which will one day be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And how now as we go through the storms and the winds of life, we are guarded by his great love. We are guarded by him. And so we can realize that, you know what, one minute we can be here. And the next minute we can be gone. Yeah. You know, we're reminded of the frailty of life continually when we when we go out and uh, for those of us who go out and we ride on the sand dunes, we we see that constantly. We we see how frail life is. In just a moment, you can be having just tons of fun, and and you can be having the time of your life. And next thing you know, something happens out there, and now. You're gripping on to life and trying to, to maintain the grasp on life as you fight for life. We've seen, we've seen it time and time again out there. People that get into a wreck. People that are driving down a road. One minute you're driving down a road and you're perfectly fine and your driving skills are good. But somebody that's coming towards you isn't paying attention or is texting or falls asleep out of the wheel, or has a medical condition, and next thing you know, they hit you head on, and now you're grasping for life. I had that almost happen to me the other day. I was driving this old road headed towards Sutherland, and we just got out on the straight stretch, and I mean, it was a straight stretch. And I'm driving, and thankfully I was paying attention, but the lady that was coming towards me, she was not. She was texting on her phone, and she crossed almost halfway over into my lane, and I jerked the steering wheel and almost had to go off of the pavement on the gravel to have her miss me. And, and, and I mean, she barely missed me with a head on, and I thought, God, thank you for your goodness. Amen. Thank you for your protection. Our life is frail. Our life is frail. You know, uh, Nick's dad just went through medical issues, had a stroke. You know, and, and Nick's dad's been healthy for a long time. I mean, ever since I've known 
next down. He's always been a healthy man, worked hard. I mean, excellent painter, just a man that loves God and just has always worked hard and been healthy. And then just in an instant, health, health is, is taking a turn for a little bit. For just a season, we're praying him out of it. And we're, we're adding our faith to his and we're praying him out of it. But it just shows you that how frail life is. We think that we're strong and maybe we're robust and we're, 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 we're strong beings. And no, you're not. <laughs> Our fra- we're so frail and we're, we're so fragile. You know, and, and, and as babies, we, we coddle the babies and, and we protect the babies. And when you, when you have a, a, a newborn infant, you, you, when you hold the baby, you hold the baby's head because you're supporting its neck because they're not able to support their, 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 their head just yet because their muscles aren't big enough and because they're so frail and they're so fragile. And then as we get older, we think, okay, we're good now because we've built up muscle and we've built up strength and we're, we're strong and we have endurance. But nonetheless, we're still frail. We're still frail. And so these sukkahs remind us, these booths or these tents, they remind us of how frail we are because they're, they're kind of shaky and they, they, could be, they could be knocked down at, 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 at any moment's time. And so we're reminded that we are guarded by the love of God, that God's grace and his love guards us daily. Daily he guards us. The sukkah is a testimony of our confidence, our hope and faith in Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is the source of our strength and salvation and reminds us once again how we are to depend on him for provision of food, water and shelter, just as he provided for Israel in the wilderness. He is the bread of life. He is the one who sacrifice, uh, satisfies the thirsty uh, through giving, the, giving of living waters as our refuge and as our shelter. And so we're reminded of this during this holiday, that he is the bread of life, that he is the one that provides food for us. He is the one that gives us water, and he is the one that gives us shelter. It's him that takes care of us. Sukkahs, or booths, were typically made very rough, signifying man's weakness, like I was just talking about. And they would be made out of various branches that they had gathered on their journey that would symbolize various aspects of of their, their journey from Egypt to the land that was flowing with milk and honey. So they would they would gather these branches in very various spots, or, or or at that spot, and they would they would use those branches and and whatnot to to erect this this sukkah or this booth, mm-hmm. and to build this booth. And these different branches would remind them of the different areas in which they would they they had, had traveled through in order to get to the promised land. They would use palm branches, which symbolize the oasis in the wilderness. These places of refreshing and rest from the sun in the hot desert, showing provision in the hottest of climates. So they would use palm branches, and that would remind them that, you know what? God protects us from from that scorching sun, from, from the heat of the enemy. God will protect you. When the, when the devil is hot on your trail, God is your protection. When the enemy is, is, is knocking down your door and he is hot on your trail, God is your protection. You can say, you can call on the name of God and the name of the Lord and he will make the devil flee. Amen? Amen. Number two, they would, they would use myrtle branches that were in the mountains, which reminded them of the rough terrain and the mountain and the mountainous routes that were taken and how God was with them through the rough and the hilly times. That no matter what was going on, how rough it gets in life, that God was with them. It wasn't an easy, an easy journey, I'm sure. It was probably rough and tough and hard. 
You know, I mean, we, we, you can look at multiple journeys and, um, and see people, you know, we can look at the journey of our lives and look at how some of us have gone through rough patches of life. Amen. I mean, we've all gone through rough patches of life. It doesn't matter who we are. We've gone through rough patches in life. And, and this, this, this time of Sukkot reminds us that God is with us in those rough patches of life. And so, you know, some people say, well, I don't want to celebrate Sukkot. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't, because it reminds you of the goodness of God in your life, in God's provision, and how God is with you when it's rough, and it feels like it's like everyone's against you, and, and you're just climbing the mountain constantly. God is still with you. Amen? Amen. And so they use the myrtle branches to, to remind them of that. They would also use willow branches that were typically found at the places of streams and places where there is a waterfall, lush trees and pools of running water where they could find fresh living water and be strengthened for the road of head, ahead. Come to me, who all who are thirsty, Amen. and I will give you a, a drink of the living water. Amen? Amen. God is a refreshing drink. You know, sometimes we just need a fresh drink of water. I don't know about you. I, I love water myself. But for me, and some people don't like ice, that's fine. That's I have a brother that he he hates ice. He drinks his water just without any ice right off the tap. Just, you know, lukewarm. <laughs> and that's that's fine. If you like it that way, that's good. Each to their own. But for me personally. Nothing is more refreshing than, man, just an ice-cold glass of water. Water on the rocks. <laughs> Nothing is better. It just, it just refreshes like none other. Last night, we were at a wedding, and I tried. I, I, used, to drink, I used to be a, a soda drinker. I used to drink pop all the time. Drink it. I, I, especially when I eat Mexican food. You have to have a coke. When you when you eat Mexican food, it's like you have to have a coke. That's how I was raised, and and I mean, so when I when I stopped drinking pop, man, it was so hard. Or McDonald's, you have to have a coke when you drink McDonald's. When you eat McDonald's, you gotta drink a coke. That's just McDonald's and coke go together. It's like two peas in a pot. That's that's just the way it is. And and so when I stopped drinking pop, man, certain foods were so hard. But now, water just, it's good with everything. Amen. It's good with everything. Like the boys and Christy, they'll have milk with like some of their certain meals that they eat. And it's like milk in, what? Do you guys have milk with spaghetti or something like that? Some do. Every meal is stew. Stew. Milk and stew. That's right. Milk and stew. And I'm just like, <laughs> you guys, you're not even related to me. <laughs> Who are you? Milk and stew. And I know, hit me up in the chat. Do you like milk and stew? Hit, hit us up. Let, let us know. That is nasty in my opinion. M maybe you like milk and stew. I don't know. We'll pray for your deliverance. But you know, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's all good. But I, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I just, I'm not a milk and stew person. I'm not a milk person. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't drink milk. Now, if, if I have cereal, I'll drink the milk. But... After, the, after I eat the cereal, especially if it's Cinnamon Toast Crunch, that is the best milk because then it's like a horchata. <laughs> That's the way you do it. Amen. And so, uh, but I, I don't know. I'm just not a, a, a milk person. But the boys and Chrissy, I mean, if they have stew, they got to have an ice cold glass of milk. And, and God forbid, like Jace, in, in the morning time, when Chrissy would wake him up or wakes him up or whatever, and, uh, she, if she would set the milk out for him, to, for him to make his own cereal or whatever, he'd get up and he'd say, don't put the milk out on the counter. It gets warm. I, and, and I'm like, Jace, it was out there like three minutes. No no way did it get warm. And he's like, yeah, I can taste the difference. I'm like, no, you can't. And no way could he taste the difference of three minutes of milk. I mean, it's got to be like ice, ice cold for Jace. To, I mean, I'm just like, dude, stop with the drama. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But anyways, so uh, willow branches just reminds them 
of, of the fact that God is, is the refreshing drink for them. The refreshing, the refreshing for them. Come drink of the living water. Amen. They would use fruit of good trees for, uh, from, from, the fertile, uh, from the fertile hillsides. And that reminds them of God's provision. And the land that they were promised would be fruitful. And so all of these remind them of the various terrains that they had to travel and traverse in the wilderness. And so they, they, would, they would be reminded when they looked at their sukkahs or their huts or their tents, whatever you want to call them. They would see the branches and they'd be reminded, you know what? You know, and, and still to this day, they make these sukkahs and these, these tents and these booths and they sleep outside in them. Still to this day, they do it in Israel and they sleep outside in them. And uh, that means they don't go to Walmart and get a Coleman tent, <laughs> a three cabin tent. They, they build a sukkah and they use these branches because it reminds them of how God takes care of us. Amen. And so once again, this is a feast of celebration. It's a feast of, of rejoicing. We are, we, are, we are to celebrate. The essence of Sukkot is joy. Being joyful in his provision. Joyful in our deliverance. The joy in, in Nehemiah chapter 8. You can look it up in your time. Nehemiah chapter 8. It says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Rejoice is a command that we know that his and we and we know that his commands are good. The word is perfect. Paul tells us that his word is good. It is for our good as it keeps us in line with his provision, his protection, his presence, and his promises. If we love him, then we obey his commands. And he commands us during the season, during this time, be joyful. Be happy. This is a feast where we are, we are mandated. That word has been used so much, it's like, it's almost like the word moist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am so sick and tired of hearing mandated. So tired of it. But we're mandated during this time to rejoice. Regardless of your circumstance and your situation. Imagine just for a moment your circumstances. They're not good. Maybe you're in a financial crisis and a financial woe. Maybe, maybe you're having health issues. Maybe you're having relational issues. Maybe just your circumstances are not the best right now. We're, regardless of all that, we're commanded to rejoice. And this is a reminder to us that joy is not determined by your circumstance. It is something that belongs to you because of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Joy is yours because of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Joy belongs to you. Joy is mine. Don't let the enemy steal it from you. Amen. Don't let the enemy steal it from you. Take back what the enemy is trying to steal from you or maybe has stolen from you. This feast is also known as the Feast of Ingathering. I talked about that a little bit earlier. As it's a picture of the harvest being brought in with great joy. After the threshing and the wine press phases are completed and the true fruit is offered, first fruits was already offered, guaranteeing us the harvest to come where we still rejoice with our Maker. And so as we get ready to close here, I just want you to know, if, if you've gotten anything out of this, this message this morning, I want you to get out of this. Sukkot is a time of rejoicing. It's a time of being happy. It's a time of remembering how good God is to you. That the goodness of God supersedes everything. Amen. The goodness of God is present in your life. You, say, you may say, well, man, you, don't, you just don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the battles and the struggles I'm dealing with right now. You don't know the heartache that lies with inside of me. I can tell you, I, I may not understand all that, that you're going through right now. And I may not, you know, understand the heartache that you're going through right now. But I, I know this. I can tell you this. That God's goodness is greater. God's yeah. mercy is greater. Yeah. God's peace is greater. God's provision is greater. 
God's protection is great. I mean, God is just greater in every aspect. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand this morning. We're going to also take up our last high holiday offering, our first fruit offering, Sukkot offering, for those of you who would like to participate in it. You can participate. It's an offering that they would do, that they would they would bring to the Lord, and they would they would bring an offering during this time, and they would say, "God, thank you for the harvest." They would harvest everything that they did, that they had planted, and they would bring all their all the their they would gather all their harvest and get their first fruit of that harvest, and they would get the best of that harvest, and they would bring it as an offering to the Lord. And say, God, we just want to thank you for, for the harvest that you've given us, for supplying everything that we've, we've encountered this last year and, and for taking care of us. And so that's what we're doing at this moment for those of you who want to participate in the High Holiday Offering of Sukkot. If we're bringing an offering to the Lord and we're saying, God, thank you, God, for for protecting us this last year, for, for your provision. Thank you, God, for your, your presence. Thank you, God, for the harvest, for continually meeting our needs, God. We just want to thank you. For those of you who are watching by stream, if you'd like to give, you can contact us, hit us up on chat, and we can give you, give you a way to give, let you know how to give. But... I just want to take a moment and pray with you for those of you who are on Facebook with us this morning. And God, I pray for everyone that's watching live this morning that you would be with them. God, help them to realize this is a season of rejoicing for your goodness and your mercy on our life, your grace. God, that you are so good to us. God, help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear the sound of your trumpet that is being sounded throughout the land, calling for your people to wake up for something is about ready to happen. God, we thank you, Lord. Bless each and every one that's watching by stream this morning. Lord, move in their lives. Be exalted in their lives. Put a hedge of protection around them, God. What the enemy means for destruction, turn it around for your glory, Lord. In Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen. We're going to go ahead and take.